Praise be Jesus and Mary. On the vigil of the solemnity of the Annunciation and uh, the consecration of Russia and Ukraine to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and after seeing the last couple of days how the various popes responded to Our Lady's request, today we want to look at St. John Paul II and how he responded to Our Lady's request of consecrating Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Entire books have, writ have been written on this, so we necessarily have to look at a cliff note version of this entire topic. And we want to touch on specifically three very important points. The first one is this. What was the crucial event that moved St. John Paul II to revisit Our Lady's request? Secondly, what did John Paul II actually do? Then thirdly, we will look at Sister Lucia's response to what John Paul II did. So those are the three essential points that we just want to briefly touch on. What happened to John Paul II? St. Peter's Square, Rome, May 13th, 1981. There's still videos and photos of this very crucial event. The Holy Father was making his rounds in the Papal Mobile and the, uh, throughout the St. Throughout the Peter's Square. And he had just taken a little two-year-old girl named Sarah into his arms. And after lifting her up for all to see, giving her a little kiss, he handed her back to her parents with a big smile. And then shots were fired. The first gunshot was fired. And a second shot immediately followed. John Paul II collapsed in the arms of his secretary, and as he was fading, he kept praying, Jesus, Mother Mary, Jesus, Mother Mary. They rushed him to Gemelli Hospital in Rome. It was during his stay at Gemelli Hospital where he deeply delved into the documents related to Fatima and the Marian apparitions, and he attentively studied them. At the end, his secretary said that after John Paul II read the text carefully, the Pope became convinced that his life had been saved thanks to Our Lady's intervention and protection. In the words of John Paul II himself, he said, one hand shot and another guided the bullet. So he attributed the fact that he lived to the Blessed Mother's intervention. One hand shot and another guided the bullet. This crucial event guided John Paul II to consecrate the world and Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Remember, he was shot on May 13th. The very first day, Our Lady appeared at Fatima. And the Holy Father was filled with immense gratitude. So he immediately thought of consecrating Russia or the world and Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So now what did John Paul II actually do? When it comes to the consecration of Russia, there are three very important dates to understand what John Paul II did. The first one is 1981, so the year he was shot. The second is 1982, so the, the following year. And then lastly, 1984. So June 7, 1981, so a couple of weeks after he was shot, he immediately composed an act of consecration, with, which, like Pope Pius XII, consecrated the whole world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Russia was included by special reference but without being mentioned by name. Now, the Pope wanted this act of consecration or entrustment to be made in St. Mary Major on June 7, 1981, the Solemnity of Pentecost. But since he was still recovering from the wounds suffered in the assassination attempt, he recorded the prayer from the hospital and had it broadcast at the Basilica. 
However, the consecration was not done in union with all of the bishops of the world, so did not completely fulfill Our Lady's request. First important date, June 7, 1981. Here's the second one. May 13, 1982. As an act of special gratitude, John Paul II went to Fatima on this day, May 13, 1982, to personally thank Our Lady at her shrine for saving his life. There, at the shrine of Our Lady of Fatima, exactly one year after the assassination attempt, he repeated his act of entrustment and consecration. The Pope that day intended to make the second consecration in union with all the bishops of the church. However, the letters that had been sent to the world's bishops inviting them to join the consecration arrived too late for them to be able to participate in the ceremony. And consequently, it also did not properly fulfill the request of Our Lady. The third and last important date, March 25th, 1984, John Paul II, who carefully studied the text, realized that without the bishops joining for the 1982 consecration, he would need to make the consecration again. So what did he do? He, de he decided to do so on March 25, 1984, the solemnity of the Annunciation at the closing ceremony of the Holy Year of Redemption. This time, he made careful preparations. More than three months in advance, the Pope sent out letters dated December 8, 1983, so Immaculate Conception, inviting all the bishops throughout the world to accompany him in the act of consecration. He also gathered all the facts relating to the consecration, reviewed the texts again that were used in the previous ones. He even consulted Sister Lucy herself. You see, never before in the history of the church had any pope gone so far as to try to fulfill the requests made by heaven through a private revelation. March 25th, 1984, in union with all of the bishops of the world, he consecrated the whole world and implicitly Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. What did Sister Lucy think about the 1984 consecration? She said, heaven has accepted this consecration. In the Congregation of Doctrine of the Faith's document, The Message of Fatima, which they released the year 2000, as part of the Holy See's official interpretation of the secret of Fatima, we read these words, quote, Sister Lucia personally confirmed that this solemn and universal act of consecration corresponded to what Our Lady wished. Now they quote a letter from Sister Lucy herself, quote, yes, it has been done just as Our Lady asked on the 25th of March, 1984, close quote. So the congregation continues, hence, any further discussion is without basis. So this is the congregation of the doctrine of the faith, quoting Sister Lucy. So trusting in John Paul II's judgment, the statement made by the congregation of the doctrine of the faith and the various letters which Sister Lucy, in which Sister Lucy herself declares that heaven has accepted this consecration, we can be sure that the 1984 consecration was accepted by heaven. So why do it again? That's the question. Why not? That's the question. Why not? Just as the first five, if you finish the first five Saturdays of the month, you should and could, you can and should continue it, continue doing it. Similarly, the 1984 consecration of Russia done by John Paul II does not preclude Another one, especially in our dark, in, in these dire circumstances. And this is exactly what Pope Francis is doing. This is a curveball of grace in our circumstances. 
and in his letter to the bishops inviting all of them to unite themselves to this consecration, he actually says that this act of consecration is a gesture on the part of the universal church. So he invites, the Holy Father Pope Francis invites not only the bishops and their priests, but all of the faithful to unite themselves and consecrate the entire world, Russia and Ukraine, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. If you remember what our Lord told Sister Lucy the year 1936, why would he not convert Russia without this consecration? He responded, because he wants the whole church to acknowledge that this triumph will come through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So wherever you are tomorrow, noontime, unite yourself to this great event of grace, which definitely will be very pleasing to our Lord and to our Blessed Mother. Praise be Jesus and Mary.